This time, let me give you another theorist of child development, Kohlberg, with his uh, stages of moral development. So he divided his stages of moral development into six stages, um, but uh, it's divided on three levels. Uh, the first one pre-conventional, the second one conventional, and the last post-conventional level of morality. So, according to him, okay, a stage one and two are pre-conventional morality. From the word pre-convention, it means uh, they do not have the idea of r really which one is right and which one is wrong. So, at stage one, uh, this is called obedience and punishment of orientation, wherein punishment is equivalent to authority. So, this is similar to PJ's first stage of moral thought. The child assumes that powerful authorities handle a fixed set of rules, which he or she must unquestioningly obey. So, the view is it's against the law or it's bad to steal, as if this were all where there were to it. So, when you are asked to elaborate, okay, the child usually responds in terms of consequences involved explaining that stealing is bad because you'll get punished so punishment is associated with um, something bad the second stage okay which is still part of pre-conventional morality okay it's called individualism and exchange this stage at this stage child uh, a child or children recognize that there is not just one right view Okay, that is handed down by authorities because they begin to appreciate different individuals and their different viewpoints. While at stage one, punishment is tied up in the child's mind with wrongness uh, or punishment proves that disobedience is wrong. At stage two, in contrast, punishment is simply a risk that one naturally wants to avoid. Okay, the second level is called conventional morality, and inside it are two stages also, stage 3 and 4. In stage 3, it's called good interpersonal relationships, so the morality is getting higher. At this stage, children who are by now usually entering their teens, they see morality as more than simple deals. They believe that people should live up to their expectation of the family and community and behave in good ways. So good behavior means having good motives and inner personal feelings such as love, empathy, trust, and concern for other people. That is stage three. So, hmm. Um, while stage 3 reasoning works best in two-person relationships with family members or close friends, okay, the other one, stage 4, uh, the respondent becomes more broadly concerned with society as a whole, as a nation. Now, the emphasis is on obeying laws, respecting authority, and performing one's duties so that the social order is maintained as a whole. So, from a smaller community at stage 3, family member and close friends, to a bigger society, or a yeah, bigger scope, which is uh, society in general, country, okay. Uh, so, let's proceed. It will lead on to the next stage, which is level uh, stage 5, social contract and individual rights, at level 3, post-conventional morality. Okay, so at this stage, people begin to ask, what makes for a good society? They begin to think about caring for the society, how they can help. They begin to think about society in a very theoretical way. Uh, well, stepping back from their own society and considering the rights and values this society ought to uphold. Then they evaluate existing societies in terms of these prior considerations so they are called prior to society perspective and uh, another thing is that okay in stage five subjects okay 
they talk about morality and rights that take some priority over particular laws. According to Kohlberg, mm -hmm. we do not judge people to be at stage 5 merely from their verbal labels because we need to look at their social perspective and mode of reasoning to be able to label them at stage 5. So the last one, okay, the last stage and and the last level, post-conventional, okay, Kohlberg believes that there must be a higher stage, which is stage 6, okay, to define the principles by which uh, we achieve justice, okay, his concept of justice follows that of philosophers Kant and Rawls and Gandhi and Martin Luther King. So according to these people, the principles of justice require us to track the claims of all parties in an impartial, um, fair manner, respecting the basic dignity of all people as individuals. So here, justice is universal, okay, or the principles of justice are universal, and they can be applied to all. So, for example, would not vote for a law that aids some people but hurt others. The principle of justice guide us to our decision based on equal respect for all. So, in summary, okay, at stage one, ch children think of what is right as that which authority says it's right. So, they depend on the authority at home. It could be parents, it could be older sisters. Doing the right thing is obeying authority and avoiding punishment. At stage 2, children are no longer so impressed by this authority, so they see there are different sides to any issue, so they begin to seek balance also. Since everything is relative, one is free to pursue one's own interest, although it is often useful to make deals and exchange favors with others. So at stage 3 and 4, Young people think as a member of the conventional society with its values, norms, and expectations. Uh, how are they different? They emphasize being a good person at stage 3, which basically means having helpful motives toward other people close to them. At stage 4, the concern shift from, okay, from the parents, from the closest uh, people, and... Uh, obeying laws to maintain society as a whole okay next one at stage five and six mm -hmm. people are less concerned with maintaining society for its own sake but more concerned with the principles and values that make for a good society so at this stage they emphasize basic rights and democratic processes that give everyone a say and at each stage they define the principles by which agreement will be most just so this is Kohlberg's theory of moral development